Happy to have with us here at ASCO 2013, Dr. Valentin Gouda. He is the principal investigator of the CLL 11 study and a member of the German CLL study group. Doctor, thanks for being with us. Thank you, pleasure to be here. This is an exciting time for you. It is, yes, and it's getting more exciting actually over the, over the year now. Congratulations. Thank you. Why did you do the CLL 11 study? Well, CLL is uh, the most common leukemia in Western countries. And we have seen um, quite uh, impressive improvement in the treatment of that disease in younger and fit patients over the last years. Now, for elderly and more unfit patients, uh, the treatment options were limited and not well evaluated, actually. And uh, we wanted to do a trial that addresses this particular patient population. That was one reason to do the trial. The other reason was to bring a new compound uh, into the clinical arena uh, for the treatment of that de disease. And that compound is a new CD20 antibody, which is uh, called obinutuzumab or GO101. So this is some groundbreaking research you've done. Specifically, which patients were involved? Uh, we uh, made sure by the study protocol that we enroll uh, elderly patients with coexisting medical conditions. So those patients practitioners typically see uh, during their day-to-day -day work uh, and uh, not too young to fit patients. We wanted to recruit a population of, uh, of patients that is representative of the majority of those patients having that particular disease, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is diagnosed normally in, at older ages. So the median age of diagnosis is 72 years. And we managed to, uh, to recruit patients with a median age of 70 three years in our trial, and our patients had also a quite a high burden of comorbidities. Um, and typical comorbidities were, for example, hypertension, uh, uh, cardiac disease, diabetes, musculoskeletal problems, pulmonary problem, problems, or renal impairment. So in overall, this was uh, a study population that was really representative of those patients typically treated by practitioners uh, outside of the uh, great hospitals, but a community-based setting. Now, you had a complex design. Can you break it down? Oh, yeah. So basically, it's a, it's a three-arm study. Um, now, um, the special thing here is that we do not collect the results at one time point. Uh, so the three treatment arms are first a chlorambucil arm. That's a chemotherapeutic agent, and that's our control arm. Um, and then we have two experimental arms. The first is uh, the combination of chlorambucil with a CD20 antibody rituximab, and the other one is the combination of chlorambucil with uh, obinutuzumab or GO101. And um, as I said before, we do not compare them all with each other at the same time, but um, uh, we have um, uh, special triggers for special, uh, for typical time points. Um, for the three pairwise comparisons. And what we currently have are the results for two pairwise comparisons. That are um, the comparison of the um, GA101 arm with the control arm and of the rituximab arm with the control arm. Um, and these results are currently presented at this meeting. So I know part of your excitement is the results. Can you give an overview of the positive results you've gotten? Well, yeah, we see that um, both, both antibody arms are superior to the uh, chemotherapy mono uh, treatment. Uh, in terms of uh, response rates, in terms of complete response rates, and um, uh, regarding a progression-free survival. To make it maybe a little bit more, more specific, uh, in, for the comparison of the GA101 arm to the control arm, we see 22% um, of the patients having complete remissions. And among those patients uh, assessed for minimal residual disease, there was no MRD negative patient in the control arm, but we had uh, in the GA101 arm 31% of the patients with MRD negativity in the blood and 17% in the bone marrow at end of treatment. And when we get to the uh, kaplan meier plots uh, for investigator assessed progression-free survival, we saw a hazard ratio of 0.14. So that's really the, the lowest hazard ratio I've so far seen in clinical trials. 
and that indicates really a, a, a great uh, efficacy of uh, that new compound GO101. For the other comparison, we also saw complete responses in the rituximab arm, 8%, but not that much MRD negative patients. And uh, for the progression-free survival, the hazard ratio there was 0.32, actually. Doctor, what are the implications for CLL patients? I think we have immediate implications, both for clinical practice and for uh, clinical research. So uh, although we do not have uh, all results of the study yet, I think we can conclude for now the following. A patient, an older patient, who is now put on chloramucil treatment should receive, in addition, a CD20 monoclonal antibody. Uh, we have infusion-related reactions and neutropenias as potential side effects of that combination treatment, but this can be overcome and does not offset the benefit we clearly see uh, with adding GA101 or rituximab to chloramucil in these patients. Of course, what is very interesting is the head-to-head -head comparison of the GA101 arm and the rituximab arm, and that comparison will then tell us whether we should go with GA101 in that particular setting. And if, you go a if we go a little bit more into the future, then of course people uh, are thinking of replacing the uh, chemotherapy backbone uh, in, that, in that treatment uh, and go for chemotherapy-free treatment by using a, a, a other biological drugs in combination with a CD20 antibody. And uh, I hope and I think this will be the right way to go forward. And I also think that the progress will be made in elderly patients who constitute for the majority of the CLL patients. Congratulations on your work. I look forward to you being able to see this video so that you can see the smile on your face as you talk about the exciting progress and the implications for patients. Best of luck going forward. Thank you very much. Dr. Valentin Gouda, he is the principal investigator of the CLL 11 study, joining us here at ASCO 2013.